Hello, um, my name is Rebecca. I eat books and I am the most spoiled girl on the planet. Recently had a large influx of books. I received a couple beautiful packages and I made an order, an end of year order. So I have all these new books. This is a real, it was a lucrative Hanukkah. I just want to show all my new toys to my friends. So here we are. So I thought I would show you what I got and you can help me decide what to read in what order. Do some organizing here. First, I got the most generous, beautiful, wonderful package from Lindsay T. Lindsay is a poet, artist, designer, investor of creative writing, all around wonderful human who I've connected with over the internet this year. She's based in New Mexico. We're back. We had a camera dying issue, but we're back. We are back. I don't know where I was. The wonderful, amazing Lindsay T. Joy of a human to interact with. Really enjoyed talking about books with her. She contributed a lot to the Sleepless Nights discussion. I can link that video here. <laughs> like six inches from where. <laughs> Like six inches from where my phone is currently recording with the couch where the dog is very deeply sleeping and he is snoring and sighing quite a bit. Now I do not have it in me to move him. So if this whole video just has a backdrop of snoring, know that it is cute. The source of that snoring is cute. Okay. Lindsay sent me this amazing package. Maybe about a month or two ago, I posted about reading constants and how I continue to struggle with feeling there are certain books above me and that I'm not understanding them or not fully grasping them or can I still enjoy a book if I don't totally get it. So I was talking about reading confidence on the Instagrams. I had lots of amazing comments and lots of people contributed. I think there's a highlight so I checked it out. As part of that discussion, Lindsay said that that's something that she has thought a lot about in her reading life and it prompted her to send me this package which is outrageously generous. I don't know how I got so lucky, really touched, and I want to show you all the great things that she sent me. So excited about every single one of these. First is an essay collection called Proxies, Essays Near Knowing. The blurbs on the back are Maggie Nelson and Claudia Rankin. No big deal. These 24 single subject essays train focus on a startling miscellany of topics that begin to unpack the essayist himself and his life's rotating concerns, sex and sexuality, poetry and poetics, subject positions in American labor, and his upbringing in working class primitive Baptist central Piedmont, North Carolina. This is essays written by a poet. I have talked about this constantly. I need to do a video about this, but books, prose, literature written by poets is my favorite thing to read. I know that's not a real genre. Poets have an amazing attention to words that the rest of us don't always have. And I just find everything written by poets to be incredibly enjoyable. So I'm very excited about this essay collection. She also sent me The Member of the Wedding by Carson McCullers. Carson is sort of the go-to Southern female writer, her and Flannery O'Connor, I guess. I'm excited about this. I'm embarrassed to admit I've never read any Carson. Justin, my partner, is a big Carson fan. We have some McCullers in the house, but not this one. And I'm very excited. This tells the story of the inimitable 12-year-old Frankly, who is uh, Frankie who is utterly hopelessly bored with life until she hears about her older brother's upcoming marriage. Frankie takes an overly active role in the wedding. She hopes even to go uninvited on the honeymoon. Okay, this sounds like a feisty young woman story, and I'm excited. The next is a collection of short stories, Cities I've Never Lived In by Sarah Majka. 
fearlessly riding the line between imagination and experience, fact and fiction, the linked stories in this debut collection offer intimate glimpses of a young New England woman whose life must begin afresh after divorce. Traveling the roads of Maine. Ooh, I freaking love a Maine, a Maine, a book set in Maine. I am really excited about this. That sounds so good. And published by Grey Wolf Press, who are amazing. And then two poetry collections, A Handmade Museum by Brenda Cultus and Obit by Victoria Chang. I'm actually, I just started this one, so I'm currently reading. This is a collection of poems written in the style of obituaries. All of them, so they're all like long, skinny obituaries like you would see in a newspaper. And they're two mostly objects, not people. This one is for optimism, for secrets, the death of secret, friendship, civility. Seems to be, you'll be shocked to hear, a real meditation on grief. I'm excited about it. And then lastly, and most amazingly, which is so great and so sweet, Lindsay sent me her own book of poetry, System of Ghosts, Poems by Lindsay Teague, amazing. And she signed it. Ugh. I, of course, dove into this right away. I could not wait. I've read a few here and there, just picking through. I will give it much more time and read it cover to cover soon. I also posted a picture of one of the poems on Instagram and a couple of people commented and were like, this is amazing. I was like, I know, it's from Lindsay. She's amazing. So that is the package from Lindsay that I did not deserve. And I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, Lindsay. You're amazing. The other package I received was also from a woman named Lindsay. <laughs> if you've watched literally any video on this channel, you will have heard me mention my friend Lindsay Glass in and of on the Instagrams. She and I also connected this year over the internet. We have now met in person once. She lives in Georgia, in Atlanta, and um, we've just become real buds, friends. Who knows if it's real? We'll find out. She sent me an amazing package because... She's amazing. We have sent a few books back and forth this year, although she has outdone me on that front. They leaps and bounds, mostly because she's read more than I have, which is really annoying. She reads faster than I do. If you watched my last video about books I'm giving for the holidays or books I recommend giving for the holidays, I mentioned in that video that the book I wanted for the holidays was Asylum Road by Olivia Sujik, and it was already in the mail to me. Can you believe that? We must be real friends because she read my mind. And I've already read it. I read it immediately when it arrived and I loved it. It was great. We have a unhinged female narrator, protagonist, that you kind of love to hate in a real Elena Ferrante kind of way. Like this woman could easily be the same woman from Days of Abandonment. I could be wrong. This book is also about the dissolution of a relationship love that. This book has the best bad sex scenes I've ever read. You heard that. That was the dog. Come on. Never before have I read scenes of completely consensual sex where I thought like that sounds terrible. I want nothing to do with that. Sujik really nails the bad sex couple relationship you are rooting to fail. Loved it. The ending is phenomenal. And then she sent me three more books, which I have not read yet. Day Book by Anne Truitt. This is a journal. Journal kept by an artist, which is also a favorite genre, not genre of mine. She was an artist exhibited at the MoMA, the Whitney, the Met, the National Gallery of Art, the Hirshhorn. You get it. Established artist. And this was her journal that she kept. One of my favorite books I read all year was a journal kept by the writer May Sarton. And May Sarton blurbs this on the back. It says, Daybook is a rare gift, illuminating and nourishing a journal to read and reread. That sounds amazing. I am very excited for this one. Louise Erdrich, Love Medicine. I have read some Erdrich. I've read La Rose, The Roundhouse, but I have not read this one. A stunning first novel in Louise Erdrich's Native American series, Love Medicine tells the story of two families, the Cashpaws and the Lanyardines, written in Erdrich's uniquely poetic, powerful style. 
It is a multi-generational portrait of strong men and women caught in an unforgettable drama of anger, desire, and the healing power that is love medicine. Blurbed by Ann Tyler and Toni Morrison. No big deal. Lastly, Joy Williams, The Visiting Privilege. This is New and Collected Stories. I had mentioned to Lindsay that I had not read any Joy Williams, who I know she loves. This seems to be sort of the Joy Williams go-to text for diving into her body of work. So I'm looking forward to getting to that. So these were the two packages from Lindsay's that I received because I am outrageously spoiled. And then I also made a big ridiculous order. Throughout the year, I whenever I hear about books that I'm excited about, I add them to my cart on, you know, cheap used book site. And then last month, I was feeling really generous to myself. I thought, you know, it's been about six months. I've done a big order. I'm going to do an end of the year order, just one big end of 2021 order. So I ordered a bunch of stuff that was in my cart. Most of these things, <laughs> I don't remember where I heard about them or was recommended them. So if you recommended them to me, let me know in the comments below. I've read one so far, which is Permafrost by Eva Balthazar. I just finished this. I loved it. I had a little bit of trouble getting into the voice of this at first. It's very confessional, stream of consciousness. And that's a very specific style. It took me a little bit to adjust to it. But once I was in, I was in. I was hooked. It is really sexy, a great queer coming of age story but it's also funny dry the humor is dry but it's also sad heartbreaking dark it's a story about suicide and depression and i loved it and the last chapter you have to read like four times that's the rule you just you have to read it four times in a row when you finish that's the rule uh, and i it showed up in the order wasn't sure who had recommended it or where i saw it but then after it showed up, Victoria from Sunshine is Sexy on Instagram posted that it was one of her favorite reads of the year. That was all I needed. I read it. I DM'd her and said, I read this because you said it was your favorite. And she said, oh, it was recommended by Lindsay. Last. Everything goes back to Lindsay. If you're wondering if I'm obsessed with her, I am. Keep going. We got a, a big step here. Will and Testament by Victus Hjort. I read another Victus Hjort book earlier this year in a vlog I did and I loved it. I had read that there was one other Victus Hjort that has been translated to English. Will and Testament, I'm really excited to get to this. Four siblings, two summer houses, one terrible secret. Okay, great. First Love by Gwendolyn Riley. I have no idea where I saw this. Catastrophically ill-suited for each other and forever straddling a line between relative calm and explosive confrontation, Nev and her husband Edwin live together in London. For the moment, they've reached a place of peace, but past battles have left scars. That sounds great. Exhibition of Persephone Q. I know a lot of people have read this. This was all over the booktube, bookstagram. And I had just never gotten around to it. I've heard only good things. I think this came out in 2020. Apparently this is from Baltimore County Public Library. If you're a librarian, can you please tell me why? I understand when they are very old, but this is only a year and it's in great condition. Why would this be taken out of circulation? Please tell me. Okay, this fatty. This big boy is Christina said The Man Who Loved Children. It's from 1940. I have read that this is sort of a go-to classic of literary fiction that everyone should read at one point in their life. I will tell you that I did not know that it was going to be this big. It is 600 pages. I tend to be very intimidated by fat books. I don't know when I'm going to feel brave enough to take this on, but it does sound great. Sam and Henny Pollitt have too many children, too little money, and too much loathing for one another. That sounds fantastic. The blurbs are Robert Lowell and Elizabeth Hardwick. So that's amazing. Lillian Hellman called her the best woman writer alive. Don't you love that? Woman writer. Great. Paradise Rock by Jenny Vall. Joe is in a strange new country for university and having a more peculiar time than most. In a house with no walls, shared with a woman who has no boundaries, 
she finds her strange homecoming to life in unimaginable ways. A debut novel from critically acclaimed artist and musician Jenny Gall presents a heady and hypersensual portrayal of sexual awakening and queer desire, say no more. Norwegian musician and writer Jenny Ball has honed an intellectual and uncompromising view of politics and sexuality in her prose, as well as in her records that include Blood Bitch, Apocalypse Girl, and Innocence is Kinky. Yeah, that sounds really good. Learned by Chris Krause of I Love Dick fame, great. Axiomatic by Maria Tumarkin, a collection of essays that I've definitely seen around, has gotten lots of good press. I think many people have recommended this to me. I've mentioned this on here before, but it is a real pet peeve of mine when blurbs are on the front cover. This says, no one can write like Maria Tumarkin by Helen Garner. That's great. That's, I think that's great. However, Maria Tumarkin worked really hard, probably years of her life to write these essays. And her name is the only one that deserves to be on the cover. That is my feeling about that. A Month in the Country by J.L. Carr. It is possible that of this entire stack of books that I bought myself, this is the only one written by a man. YRB Classic, blurbed on the back by Penelope Fitzgerald, takes place in the English countryside, copyright 1980, deeply charged Poetic novel, you know I love that. A veteran of a broken marriage arrives in the remote Yorkshire village of Oxgodby. Is that a real place? UK friends, let me know. To restore a recently discovered medieval mural in the local church. Living in the bell tower. This sounds very romantic and beautiful. The Pumpkin Eater by Penelope Mortimer. This I do know who recommended to me. This was Jessica of Jessica's Bookstack. She has been insisting I get on this one. So Jessica, this is for you. Mrs. Armitage insisted it was because of the dust on everything in the house, but perhaps it was the oncoming death of her fourth marriage that drove her to the psychiatrist. Sounds like a thinky woman book. Also, if there has been one theme, it's been disillusion of marriage and divorce. We love it. Strange Hotel by Amir McBride. This I know my boy Ben, Ben Green, read this this year. He said it was really weird, and I am here for weird, and I'm here for Ben. Iris Murdoch, a fairly honorable defeat. 2021 was the year that I read my first Murdoch. I read The Severed Head, loved it. 2022 will be a year I read a lot more Iris Murdoch. This I saw called The Queerest Murdoch. Uh, so I decided that it was one I had to read next for sure. A dark comedy of errors demonstrates how easily loving couples, caring friends, and devoted siblings can betray their loyalties. Sounds fantastic. An exploration of love, its excesses, missteps, modest triumphs, and fairly honorable defeats. Little Constructions by Anna Burns. This year I read Milkman. This is Anna Burns' follow-up to Milkman. Really enjoyed Milkman, so... Thought I'd give it a try. Anna Burns is from Northern Ireland. Milkman was about the Troubles. This takes place in the small town of Tiptoe Floorboard. That can't be real. A close-knit family of criminals and victims. Sounds great. Anybody read this? Let me know. It definitely has not gotten as much publicity as Milkman. Last book. We're almost there, guys. The Coming Bad Days by Sarah Bernstein. I think of all of these books, this is the newest one. Copyright 2021. I think this is a book that is only out in the UK, not out in the US yet. Blurred by Olivia Sujic on the back. She calls it sinewy and seductive. A woman leaves the man she lives with. If my husband is watching this, this is a coincidence. I'm not obsessed with divorce right now. Please don't be scared. A woman leaves the man she lives with and moves to a low stone cottage in a university town. She joins an academic department. I love an academic book. This is also a theme I love, women in academia. Okay, I think I'm really excited to read this one. I'm really excited to read Day Book. Very excited about this short story collection, Cities I've Never Lived In. Um, and all of them, I wanna read them all. Will and Testament for sure. Paradise Rot sounds really good. I don't know how I'm gonna choose. I have some reading to do. I'm just the luckiest human in the 
world. Spoiled completely rotten. Thank you to my Lindsay friends for sending me these beautiful packages. To myself for sending me this beautiful package. Please let me know if you've read any of these books, if you're excited about any of these books, which ones you think I absolutely have to read immediately, and which ones should language on my TBR for 12 to 18 months until I get around to it. All right. Thanks for watching. Love you, nerds. See you soon. Thank <music> you.